And we are live. Just that easy. And you didn't even have to log into Facebook. Look at that. Right? Right. How cool is that? Yeah, Bye. nothing to fear with modern technology, I guess. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We are here on Chips and Chat this morning, 10 a.m. here with the Arizona Department of Corrections. I am Angelica from the Sierra Vista Goodwill Job Connection Center. And the gentleman next to me is going to tell me who you are. Uh, my name is Sergeant Russo. Uh, I've been with the Arizona, uh, Arizona Department of Corrections for almost 12 years now. It'll be 12 years next month. Um, and I am one of the uh, recruiters here in the Tucson sector. Uh, and I do most of the recruiting here for Tucson, Sierra Vista, Douglas, uh, basically the southern Arizona uh, portion of Arizona. But I still do a lot of recruitment for uh, central Arizona and northern Arizona as well. That is incredible. And today... I'm with a chip traditionalist today, and we are going to be enjoying nacho cheese Doritos, the classics. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I, I, I have a theory uh, behind that. Cause I, I know that when my mother, when she was pregnant with me, she her biggest craving was uh, Pepsi and nacho cheese Doritos. Now, I'm not a huge Pepsi guy, but you give me you give me a a, a, a thing of you know, regular Coke and, and a bag of nacho cheese Doritos and I'm in heaven. So wow. I, have this, I have this theory that, you know, whatever your, whatever your mom was craving when she's pregnant with you is probably one of your more favorite foods. Cause when my mom was pregnant with my sister, she craved root beer floats. My sister loves root beer floats. Oh so, my it's goodness. Just, so it's just a, a personal little um, theory I have. That's completely, actually really cool. My yeah, sister. Completely unscientific. I don't know what my mom craved when she was pregnant with me, but when my mom was pregnant with my sister, she, my mom really likes bell peppers, but every time she ate them, she would get gassy with my sister. To this day, my sister can't eat bell peppers because she gets gassy. See? <laughs> so it was a theory. It. It worked. Yeah, you may be right there. Yeah. <laughs> it really. Yeah. How funny is that? Yeah. So you were mentioning you've been with the Department of Corrections for quite a few years now. How did you get started with them? So I actually got started with the Department of Corrections. Um, because as I was growing up, I always wanted to be um, in law enforcement. Uh, I had two career uh, choices. One was to be playing uh, right field for the San Francisco Giants. That's clearly not happening. Or <laughs> move into law enforcement. Um, so law enforcement was always um, uh, probably my, my number one thing. Um, and about a uh, long time ago, California, doing like loss prevention, uh, security, bus and shoplifters, that kind of stuff. And then I actually started working for uh, Tiffany and Company, the, the jewelry store, one of their security officers. Yeah, my, my wife enjoyed that uh, <laughs> few years I was working for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so she, she always knew that, uh, you know, her birthday's coming around or Christmas or whatever. She's like, oh, what am I getting this year? You know, type of stuff. <laughs> so... Um, then uh, I got a promotion with Tiffany's and I actually um, became a security manager for them. And I actually opened up the, the store here in Tucson. I was the first security manager there. Wow. Um, and then, you know, of course the economy uh, did what it does, um, you know, several years ago. And so I lost, uh, I lost my job there. Um, and at that point I was like, okay, it's time to get serious with the whole uh, law enforcement thing. And, uh, got into the Department of Corrections. And for me, it was originally supposed to be just kind of a stepping stone uh, from here to eventually either Border Patrol or police or something along those lines. Uh, but um, I enjoy what I do. And uh, I, I, you know, 12 years later, well, almost 12 years, uh, I'm still here. So uh, I'm on that downhill slide, uh, getting close to my retirement here. And you know, I'm still counting the years. I can't wait till it's the months and then the days. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm still here doing it. And, uh, and I enjoy what I do very much. That is excellent. That's such a cool story that you can transition in your careers as well. Like I know a lot of people get worried, like I've only done this, I can only do this. And it's like a lot of the skills you have transition to other jobs, or you can find to be in the same field, just with a different company. And that's Absolutely. a great Great story to explain that. So what exactly does the Department of Corrections do? So the Department of Corrections, I mean, we're not just here to, 
as people see in like TV and movies, you know, they deal with the inmates, they slam the door, throw away the key, and all that. That's that's not our purpose. That's not our function. You know, as everyone, we are not what you see on TV in the movies. Okay, so you know, you got to get that whole stereotype out of your head. Um, our purpose is to get those offenders off the streets and the ones that can and the ones that want to be rehabilitated our purpose is to do every possible way they can to move out into society and be a functioning member and a productive member of society because you know we have over 40,000 inmates right now in the Arizona Department of Corrections and when these people get out and eventually you know most of them are going to get out these are people that are your neighbors they're working at the stores the gas stations uh you know they're they're everywhere you know this is you know you could be walking your dog down the road and you know say hi to your to your neighbor and little do you know maybe he spent some time with us um so it, it's our job to get them to be a functioning productive member of society after spending time with us that's one of our our main goals um as officers we have counselors you know all of them gotta you know take classes and stuff so we don't just have them come and sit down for a year or two whatever and then just say okay you're done bye-bye but no i mean we're, we're helping them find housing when they leave uh take more classes when they leave we uh for um the individuals who are parents we give them parenting classes even you know so that way they're not just trying to figure out how to be a parent on the fly like a lot of them are you know we're giving them classes saying hey when your kids are doing a b and c you need to do d e and f you can't just say not my problem you know so we do a lot of things to help them integrate as seamlessly as possible in back into society one of our main objectives that is really awesome. That is so helpful. I didn't realize that so much more resources were provided. Yeah, uh, we have, you know, for the, the ones that, you know, come to us with like uh, alcohol addictions, we have alcohol anonymous classes. We have uh, drug dependency classes to help try to get them off of drugs and everything. So we're not, again, we're not just sitting here having them waste you know, five, 10 years or whatever, just sitting in a cell wasting taxpayer dollars. We're trying to educate them, help them, and get them off of any other kind of dependencies that they might have. That's incredible. So what type of positions are you hiring for right now? <clears throat> Excuse me. So we are mainly hiring for correctional officers. That's what I started out as. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we have a need here in Tucson. Douglas right now is actually uh, filled. We actually just closed. We have some people in the hiring process right now. And Douglas is actually pretty much filled with officers. So they're good. Um, but we have a need at our uh, uh, Lewis Complex in Buckeye, our Florence Complex. We have need. We have needs here in Tucson, Safford, Winslow. So we got needs all over the place. Um, but we're looking for officers. And I, I really got to stress to everyone that uh, anyone could be a correctional officer. Anyone. I mean, you don't have to have a law enforcement background. My um, former lieutenant, he had a background as an EMT. Um, and that's what he started out as. Um, and then the economy, you know, tanked on him. And he had to find, uh, you know, another career. I know people who uh, had their own business as like plumbers and electricians. People start out as teachers, but then they want to get out of the education field and, you know, do something else. So, you know, you don't have to be some ex-military gym loving nut who, you know, bench pressing five bills every day. It's it's not like that at all. And I, and I love to tell people and I stress it as much as I can that this job can be and is for everybody. Um, we recently lowered our hiring age down from uh, 21 to 18. Oh. So we're giving um, opportunity to high schoolers, essentially, who want to be in law enforcement. We're giving them that three years of education and opportunity so that, because in order to apply for, say, the police department, border patrol, sheriffs, you got to be 21 years of age, except for the sheriffs in their jails, you can be 18. But if you want to work the streets as a sheriff, 
you got to be at least 21 years of age. So we're giving them that three years of education uh, and, and something to kind of cling on to. So that way when they uh, go for their career in something else, they have something that they can point to and say, I did that, you know, unlike a lot of other people. So, um, and also we find that, you know, let's face it, we've all been 18, 19, 20, 21. We tend to do stupid things. Okay. And unfortunately, we realize that a lot of times people who want to be in law enforcement, they sometimes ruin any chances they have because they do something really stupid at a young age. So we're like, hey, let's get these guys and gals before they do something that's going to ruin their career down the line. Mm -hmm. So we get them going at the age of 18 and 19. Um, and so they can understand the importance of what it means to wear this badge and what's, you know, how important it is to have a career and be going. Um, so we, we try to help out, obviously not just the inmates, but we're trying to help out, you know, the youth as well. You know, Hey, get going in your career now. Don't wait, get it going. That is so incredible. So I like that you like slightly dropped like oh we're better because we, right. start 15, we get you off the streets we do all these great skills like, that's exactly like, it. right at the beginning like not just here's what we offer this is why we're awesome <laughs> so that was really cool and i think it's also incredible that you guys have recognized like you're essentially affecting your workforce too by not starting at the age of 18 because of those short years that could potentially cause something crazy to happen and now yeah. you're opening up all these extra workers to this potential that's incredible yeah yeah i mean you got you have to keep your options open you, you really do um now i mean let's let's face it generations have changed uh an 18 year old today is vastly different than say an 18 year old in the 40s 50s 60s right. and so i look at this as a great way of saying hey let's let's get back to instilling some work ethic um, into these individuals and get them going on the right path here. That's incredible. So what are the typical job requirements for that position? So the minimum qualifications, 18 years of age with a high school diploma or GED, no felony or domestic violence convictions. You have to have a driver's license with no restrictions and it can provide proof of legal U.S. residency, birth certificate, passport, green card, uh, naturalization papers, that kind of stuff. That's it. That's wow. that's all you need. And let's face it, I would say probably what ninety percent of the population can probably fulfill those minimum requirements. Um, yeah. yeah, you don't need to have a uh, formal college education. It helps if you do. Um, it will give you a, a uh, an increase in your base pay. And here's the cool thing: we also give people. Um, up to three thousand dollars a year in college tuition reimbursement so you come and you work with us let's say you want to get a degree you want to make yourself better you want to go to pima college coaches college you know whatever one of the smaller community colleges three thousand dollars a year is going to be a huge chunk of change yes. going towards your tuition now let's face it if you want to go to the u of a that three thousand dollars might buy a book or two um you know but, but it's helpful. Exactly. It helps me going to school. Exactly. So, um, and the thing is, as you move up the ranks, so um, my next step in the ranks would be lieutenant if I if I wanted to go that way. And then there's captain, uh, but and then major. But let's say if I want to take over my own unit as a deputy warden, well, you have to have a college de degree for that. Okay. Um, so you can move up the ranks without any formal education. But it's it, there's always that one uh, point in time where you have to have that uh, have to have that degree. That's great. Okay, so then what is the process for promotion? Because you talked about you have the option. You obviously need some education to continue up. How does it work to promote within the company? So let, let's start at the very beginning. So um, you start out as an officer. Uh, you'll come to our academy for seven weeks. And there we're going to give you the education, just a, a fundamental base of what you need to know how to be an officer. And then from there, you're going to move up uh, as an officer. Um, once you've completed your one year probation, 
uh, that's when you can start branching out into other things. You could branch out into our SWAT team, which is what we call TSU. You could branch out into canine. You could branch out into mail and property. You can branch out into our investigative unit called SSU. You, you have all, everything opens up after you've completed your one year probation. Then you hit your two years. That's when you can go through start with the promotional process. So as an officer, you promote to sergeant. Um, and that process is basically you got to take a test just like you would to get into the department. But this is a more specified test on policies and procedures. Um, then you, you go in front of an oral board where you, uh, you know, basically get questions fired at you from about uh, three different people. It's usually uh, a lieutenant, a captain and a major. And they're firing you questions about um, just policies and procedures. And then you make a list. And depending on how you scored on everything, depends on where you are on that list. And the list goes out statewide. Um, thing for lieutenant and then captain. And uh, I'm not entirely certain what, what the process is for major, because usually that's just someone that kind of gets announced. Um, but I mean, you could even be an officer and you could uh, apply for lieutenant if you want and skip that sergeant um, yeah. uh, step but it's extremely difficult. The higher you are in rank, the more points you get, the easier it is to promote. I got it. Wow. That's so cool. So this is like an amazing, I am learning so much here. Like you said, forget what you see on TV, forget yep. what the movies show you and, and like listen to how it truly is structured. And that's amazing. Yeah. So to recap here, you have to be 18 with a high school diploma or a GED, Correct. you have to show that, that you're a resident of the United States, yep. and which can be shown in many of ways, right? Like yep. you said, green card, passport, all that stuff. Yep. And then you don't need any physical requirements. And well, I, I shouldn't say no. No, you, there are some physical requirements you do need to meet because when you come on testing day, when you sign up to be a correctional officer, mm -hmm. there there is a, a fitness standard you do have to pass. Okay. So uh, the main the main standards are four push-ups, 16 sit-ups, and you have to be able to do a mile in under 17 minutes. It doesn't matter if you run it, jog it, walk it, or if you can do the backstroke on concrete, <laughs> whatever gets it done, then you know, you, uh, you're you good to go. But there is a, a testing day when people do sign up to be a correctional officer, they have to pass a 60 question multiple choice exam. And then once they pass that, then there is a physical exam same day. That's incredible, but not too harsh. The physical requirements aren't too bad. No. And what does the test cover? So the test is a common sense, basic knowledge style quiz. Okay. You, you don't need obviously any kind of law enforcement training before. Okay. okay? But it's basically breaking up, uh, broken up into four sections. Um, the first section being a memorization uh, part, of, part of the quiz where we're going to give you a picture you got two minutes to study it, and we're even going to give you some scratch paper that you can write all the notes you can on those two minutes. And so then you, uh, the first section of the quiz is going to be based off of that picture, and you get to use your notes. So it's not like, you know, we're going to say, okay, two minutes, look at a picture, good luck. You know, <laughs> it's not like that at all. Um, and then the, the next uh, portion of the quiz is being able to read and understand uh, written instructions. And without getting too much into the weeds in it, because I don't want to give anything away for anyone. Right. Um, they're basically going to give you a box with some um, symbols, some numbers, some letters. And, you know, some are going to be circled, some are going to be underlined. And you're going to be answering questions based on what you see in those boxes. Okay. It's very, you know, cut and dry, straightforward. Um, and then the last part is really a whole lot of what would you do in this scenario type of deal. And, you know, to kind of give people a, a, an understanding of it. Uh, my son is a sophomore in high school. And, you know, for giggles, you know, I, I just kind of curious to see how he would do. So I brought the test home one day and he was a freshman at the time. You know, he complained and whined and moaned because <laughs> I was going to get tower out of his Saturday from PlayStation and his friends and make him take this test. So he took the test not really wanting to take it. And he failed. But... But you need a 41 to pass, 41 out of 60. So that's like a, a D, essentially. Yeah. He, he got a 33. So even as a freshman in high school, 
he was only eight points off. Without putting in effort. Right. Right. So right. people who are there that actually want the job are obviously putting in effort. Correct. So the chances of passing are highly likely. Yes. Yes. Now, and here's the great thing. If you don't pass the, the test, we bring you back two weeks later to do it again. The test doesn't change. It stays exactly the same. Nothing changes. You will take the same exact test. And I would say nine and a half times out of 10, the people who come back the second time pass. That's excellent. So how many chances do you have to take this test? As many as you want. So essentially, here, here's the way it works. You take the test the first time, you don't pass. You come back in two weeks, take it again. Mm -hmm. If you don't pass that second time, however, you have to wait six months before you can come back and, and retake it. But at that point in time, hopefully, you know, uh, you're, you're a little more confident in yourself. You've got a little bit of education on your belt for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, and you can come back and you take the same thing over and over and over again. And I've, you know, I have people who have come and taken it three and four and five times. And, you know, a lot of times they have just like test anxiety and they're yeah. having a hard time you know, overcoming that. Um, you know, the, the test is all in English. We have a lot of people that, you know, Spanish is their primary language. Um, they do struggle a little bit. Um, but eventually they, you know, they either go to school and, and take English classes and then they come back and they pass it. And so, you know, I, I, I always tell everyone, don't get discouraged if you fail. Do not get discouraged. If you want this job, you will find a way. And there are lots of ways. That is so cool. So, I mean, this is great. So you mentioned that this job is wonderful if you're fresh out of high school, because mm -hmm. the requirement is now to be at least 18. Yep. If you are transitioning careers for whatever reason, because you got tired of the field you're in, or because of the economy, your position was eliminated. This is an excellent, excellent career to transition into yep. for something new. You guys offer training. So you don't have to have any prior experience or any law enforcement background coming into right. it. So that's an extra great requirement. And then the entrance, you're allowed to keep trying. Like yeah. It's not saying, thanks, you put an effort, we don't need you now. It's, you want to be here, we want you to be here then. So let's keep trying together so we can get you here. That's exactly it. That's, that's so exactly cool. it. You hit the nail on the head. That, that's exactly it. If, I always tell people, if, if they want to come here, if they want a job, and you know, I, I always kind of make light of it, but it's very true. You know, we're like Motel 6. We keep the lights on for you. <laughs> you know, we're always here. I mean, seriously. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, we are, believe it or not, even though we are a state agency, we're still kind of economy driven in the sense that when the economy is really good, when the economy is really good, you know, people uh, every now and then they find that the grass is greener on the other side. They can make more money doing you know, whatever, IT, mm -hmm. whatever kind of services. Then the economy takes a dump like it, it always does. Right. Then next thing people start saying, hey, I need a job where I'm not based on the economy, where the economy doesn't determine if I'm hired or fired. And they realize, oh, Department of Corrections, I go there. I'm there. That's it. My, mm -hmm. my future is based upon me. And here in the Department of Corrections, you truly are the master of your own future. There is nothing holding you back except That's incredible. So you may not be able to answer this question, but you said you work for the state. So does that mean that you can apply to other state jobs after a certain time if they want to transition within the state? So there are some positions within the state of Arizona that, yes, we can later, laterally transfer to. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do get to see a lot of openings within the state um, that we can apply to um, that, you know, like, for instance, I'm already currently working here. Let's say if I wanted uh, a clerical job, I, right. I want to get out of uniform. I want something more along the clerical ends. Um, I, I can laterally transfer to something like that as long as I meet the requirements and um you know they like me um but uh that's you know all based upon you know the state agency and that kinds of fun stuff so okay. like i wanted to go into like highway patrol i'd still have to go through their entire hiring process and everything so it's slightly different okay that makes sense i mean it is completely different careers but you know you're in the yeah. system you get to see him first at least that's a exactly thing. <laughs> exactly. And, and and the cool thing is, is that with us, there's always different openings everywhere within our agency. So, you know, I know lots of people who started out as officers and sergeants and then they're like, oh, 
there's this other opening. So I'm going to move into this section. Like, for instance, we have what's called a CO3. As an officer, you start out as a CO2. And let's say you don't want to be in uniform anymore and you want to do more programming, helping the inmates find those jobs, uh, find housing, get them jobs while they're still in the prison, that kind of fun stuff. Uh, you can move, you can apply oral board and the test and everything. And instead of uh, branching off to a sergeant, you can branch off to a CO3, which again is more clerical, but you're still doing more stuff. And a lot of times for a lot of people, especially who have that college education or want the college education, branching off into the CO3 route <clears throat> means you're essentially uh, trying to be a deputy warden at some point. Ooh. That's because after CO3, you become what's like a CO4. And a CO4 is like a step right below like the, the deputy warden's right hand man, essentially. So then after um, CO4, we have the associate deputy warden, ADW, and then there's the deputy warden right after that. Um, I mean, you can go, you can promote and be a captain and then move into deputy warden. That's totally fine too. Um, but a lot of times people who are CO3s, they wanna make that transition out of the uniform and, and do something Mm -hmm. uh, in theory, a little less hectic. That's incredible. So again, another benefit is literally you can, like you said, you are your own person preventing you from growing within this organization. It's mm -hmm. you choose whichever path you can go this way or that way. And it all, it's endless almost. And it's yeah. constant change and potential for growth. That's incredible. Yeah. And we have so many different positions that like I always tell everyone, if you are stagnant or if you are bored with your job, it's your own fault. It is literally your own fault. Um, after my probationary period was up, um, I became a mail and property officer for the unit that I was at. We had over 800 inmates. So I was the sole man that was in charge of all their property that was coming into the unit and all the property that was going out to the unit because these guys get magazines, CDs, tennis shoes, all that kinds of stuff. So I was in charge of making sure that they got their stuff. They were sending out their mail, legal mail, all that kind of stuff, everything. Um, and then I moved into what we called complex work crews. And um, I had to apply for that position, do, did an oral board, all that kind of good stuff. And I was in charge of the vehicle gate. So all the cars that were coming in and out, I had to search them, make sure people were approved to come in and out, all that kinds of good stuff. And then I moved into another part of the work crews where I actually had a work crew of eight inmates nonviolent offenders, um, all kind of white collar crimes, that kind of fun stuff. And I would take these eight inmates out every day and they built hab uh, uh, houses for Habitat for Humanity. So these guys were getting an education on plumbing, electrical uh, work, framing, roofing, everything that goes into building a home. And these guys were working alongside the volunteers for Habitat for Humanity uh, and, and trying and, and building houses, essentially trying to make, you know, the world a little bit better place. That is awesome. So we've talked a lot about benefits. What actual like fringe benefits are offered? So you, you're going to get like the full gamut of benefits. So, I mean, you're going to get your, your medical, you're going to get your choices of medical plans, dental plans, vision plans, all that kinds of good stuff, all your normal stuff. Um, I know for me that the medical insurance here has been amazing uh, for me and my family. My son's had to have three foot surgeries. Uh, I, you know, I have a, I, I got a, one of those CPAP machines, so I breathe like Darth Vader every night. Um, and I had to have back surgery, and you know, that back surgery, I want to say it was only like a hundred, hundred fifty bucks out of pocket. Yeah, so. The CPAP machine, when I got it, it was free. My uh, supplies that I get every six months are free. Um, so, I mean, the department benefit-wise has been uh, pretty awesome to me. And again, you know, if I want to go back to school, I got that $3,000 college tuition reimbursement, you know, just sitting there waiting for me. Um, but you're you're going to get your holidays. You're going to um, get uh, uh, pay time off, what we call annual leave. And that accrues, you get so many hours. When you start off um, with the department, you get so many hours every pay period. So every two weeks, you get like 3.67 hours. It's not a lot, but after three pay period pay periods, well, you've earned a day off, okay? 
Um, and it's the same thing with the sick leave. Now, sick leave never changes. It always stays the same. Mm -hmm. But as your years increase with the department, the uh, paid time off you get, your, you know, your vacation time, you actually get more hours every pay period. Um, for me, because of my position as a sergeant and, and my years in, I'm getting, I want to say, a little over six hours of every pay period. So it's literally every two pay periods every month, I'm getting like a day and a half off. Yeah. So I've earned, um, I've banked uh, like 240 hours of leave that I can take and I can carry over because of my position as a sergeant, I can carry 320 hours over every single year. And if, if at the end of the year, if I'm over that 320 hours, well then my supervisor says, you need to take time off. <laughs> what? You're telling me I have to go home and get paid? Oh, <laughs> LT, that sucks. You know? So, but um, but the sick leave, that accrues. That, that you don't have to take time off, that, that accrues uh, over time, which was a good thing for me because I was actually out of work uh, for three weeks with COVID. And so I didn't skip a beat. Paychecks kept rolling in, no issues because I don't take time off of work hardly ever. So I had plenty of sick leave and I still have something like 200 hours no. uh, still to go with that. So, you know, if something happens, I'm, I'm set. Uh, we also have uh, like bereavement leave. So if a close family member passes away, uh, you get three days off for that. And if they're out of state, you get five days. Um, I, you know, uh, at some point, you know, life tends to take more than it gives back. I've had to use that a couple of times. It is what it is. Um, and the cool thing is that, you know, if you get, uh, if you work a holiday, let's say you have to work Christmas, because again, we are a, a business that's 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Let's say you got to work, you have to work Christmas. Well, you get your pay, hours of uh, leave as well. So it's like extra more vacation time that you can Whoa. use. Mm -hmm. So instead of using your vacation time, you can use that that holiday time. So it, it's the department's way of saying, hey, we're sorry you had to work on Christmas or Thanksgiving or whenever you know the federal holidays are, but here's here's some more time to spend with your family. That's incredible. So what are the typical hours of a, a day for the job or schedule? So we have three main shifts. You have day shift, which is from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. You have swing shift, which is from 2 p.m. to 10, 10 p.m. So there's always a shift where there's uh, people here. Now, those are for eight-hour shifts. We do have some units and some complexes that actually have 12-hour shifts. And those are um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for day shift and then 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. for um, night shift. Now, with your normal eight-hour shifts, you're going to have your two days off. Um, some people will get Monday, Tuesday. Some get Thursday, Friday. Uh, and and at, over time, you can get onto a Saturday, Sunday shift. It takes time because there's a list. And when you start new, guess what? You're at the bottom of the list and you got to work your way up. Um, but for me, I know when I started, I was on swing shift with uh, Wednesday, Thursday off. After three months, I got to Sunday, Monday off. <laughs> three months after that, I was still swing shift, but I had Saturday, Sunday off. Mm. And then I want to say it's about four or five months after that. Uh, that's when I got that mail and property job. And I had day shift, weekends and holidays off. So it didn't take me hardly any time at all to work my way. I mean, you, you're not going to get that if you're a schlub of an officer. You got you got to bust your butt and, 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 you know, to get there. And that's why I did because I wanted to spend more time with my family. Now, those 12 hour shifts, if you like getting uh, if you don't mind working a lot of hours and getting a little mini vacation every other week, it's, you know, quite possibly the shift for you, because the way that works is that. So when I did that at our miners unit, I would work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all 12 hour shifts. And then I would have Thursday, Friday, Saturday off. Mm -hmm. But the very next week I would work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but then I would have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday off. So, you know, those, those four day weeks, it was like, okay, babe, 
you, you know, as soon as I get off of work, uh, 6 p.m. on on uh, on Tuesday, pack your bag. We're going to go down to San Diego for a couple days. Yeah. Of course, that was COVID. So um, <laughs> go down to San Diego for a few days, see some family, hit the beach, come on back, and then go to work. That is awesome. So that's and that's another great thing. They have schedules built for your lifestyle, basically. Yes. Like yes. you can work towards it. You can adjust as needed or find a schedule that really works for you. So, so much potential, so much growth, so much opportunity. I'm so glad we talked today. Chatting yeah. with chips. This was great. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are so energetic. This is too early in the morning for your energy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I do not awesome. have enough Red Bulls to keep up with you. <laughs> because I'm so excited. This is so much great information and the opportunity. So what? I, mean, I just have to ask, based on everything that I've learned, so anyone who's tuning in and hasn't from the beginning, you have to be 18. You have to show that you can legally work in the United States. Um, you have to um, have no experience because um, it's not a requirement. There's one short, I mean, not short test, but I mean a pretty common sense, well thought out test. You have full benefits. You have educational reimbursements that's offered. You have statewide opening, so you could be anywhere transition, work, wherever. So what is the main barrier for hiring people? The, the main barrier for hiring people is themselves. It, to be very bluntly honest, it really is themselves. Sometimes people, they come and test and I, I can understand the test anxiety portion, but then again, there's some people who, who come and test and they just think like, this is easy and they blow right through it. They don't really give it much thought. Then they fail and they're like, oh my God. And sometimes they're too embarrassed to come back because like, I failed once, I'm going to fail again, forget it. And then we never hear from them again. But the people that, that come back and test, they pass, they get through. Uh, and, and really their, their main barrier is themselves with the testing process. Now, there's also those people out there who in their youth, in their younger days, they did some questionable, stupid stuff. Who hasn't? We all have. But sometimes that can affect the, the hiring process because once as they move along, we are going to do a background check. And at that mm -hmm. point, things are going to come up and our backgrounds, people, they're either going to go thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, so really, people's barriers are really themselves more than anything else. Got it. OK, yeah. is there a study guide available to help with the test? So not really. Uh, some libraries do have um, some types of study guides out there mm -hmm. um, for like the police test, border patrol test, all that. And you can kind of use that, but those are more like detailed and specific towards their tests. Again, ours is, is common sense because we understand that, you know, the your average 18, 19, 20 year old has no law enforcement experience, probably hasn't gone to college and taken any law enforcement classes. So we want to make it as um, I don't, easy is not the right word, but we want to make it, you know, as able for people to pass and get through and be able to start their career. Um, Cause I'm not going to sit here and say that the test is, is easy. Um, but you do have to exercise some common sense when, when you are taking the test. Got it. So how do people apply for these positions? The best way to do it is to call me. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll even put all my information here in the chat. So anyone who's watching can, uh, can see it. Um, and you can call me or any other recruiter. And basically we sign you up over the phone. Um, you can, or you can put in a resume to like Indeed or Career Builder, um, and we get those resumes, and then we call you up. As long as you meet the minimum qualifications, you're all good. Exciting. Is there anything you think hasn't been covered yet that they have to know about why working with the Arizona Department of Corrections is the job for them? So let me put it to you like this. The Arizona Department of Corrections if you want a future and you want to be the master of your own future, this is the place for you. You know, anyone can get a job anywhere else doing something, uh, 
you know, let's say if you want to be an electrician or a plumber, there is nothing wrong with that at all. We, we need them. God knows I do. I have a home. I need them. Love them. Um, but a lot of times with these businesses or industries, you know, it's very much, uh, you know, kind of, I don't want to use the word, the, the phrase pyramid scheme, but it really kind of is. There's the one man at the top. You got these two spots, these three middle managers, and then there's everybody else. So you're waiting for someone to either retire, leave, promote up, whatever, for other spots to open. With us, we literally have testing for sergeants uh, either once or twice a year, lieutenants, same things, captain, same things. And, you know, there is so much room to grow because you take Tucson complex. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's nine different units. Each unit has a captain. Each unit has four, maybe five lieutenants. And off of those four to five lieutenants, you're going to have, uh, what? Four times four, 16, 16, 18 sergeants Whoa. roughly per per unit. And then you have the officers, <clears throat> you know, you're going to have anywhere from like 30 to 40 officers. And so as people retire, people promote, there's openings everywhere. And if you're someone who, you know, promotes and you start as an officer, you test for sergeant. And if you're willing to open up your geographical location, that just means you can promote wherever in the state of Arizona. So if you live in Tucson, but maybe you got family in Winslow, Winslow calls you up, says, hey, we got a sergeant opening. You want to come? Boom. You go to Winslow. And we will never, ever send you somewhere you don't want to go. You tell us where you want to go. So yeah. if you live in Tucson, we're not going to say, hey, we know you live in Tucson, but guess what? We need you in Yuma. That's not going to happen. That, that <laughs> it, it doesn't happen like that. If you want to work in Yuma, we'll get you to Yuma in some way, shape, or form. That is incredible. All right. So recap. For everyone, the requirements to work for your company. So 18 years of age with a high school diploma or GED or even transcripts, just something that shows you graduated high school or the equivalent thereof. Uh, uh, Got to be uh, 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 no felonies or domestic violence convictions, uh, valid driver's license with no restrictions. And when I say no restrictions, I mean, um, you know, you can have glasses, drive at night, all that kinds of good stuff. When we say no restrictions, we mean like no DUIs. Um, and if you had a previous DUI, as long as it's been taken care of, that's fine. Uh, we mean when we say no restrictions, basically you can't have the breathalyzer interlock on your vehicle because we do have driving positions. And believe it or not, we do do a lot of driving. So that's the reason why. Uh, requirement is you got to be able to show proof of legal use residency, a birth certificate, passport, green card, naturalization papers. And then you apply on the state job website. Uh, well, you, you send a, a resume through Indeed or okay. Career Builder. Those are the easiest, best ways. Um, you can go to the state uh, azstatejobs.gov website, and that's where you can actually see a full rundown of all the positions statewide that the Arizona Department of Corrections offers. So you'll see correctional officer, you'll see clerical, chaplain, um, and, and a whole various other positions. But, you know, I put my, my number and my email up there in the chat for anybody who has any other questions or if they want to apply. All they got to do is shoot me an email or call me and uh, we'll set something up over the phone. because That's usually the way it works. That is so incredible. Thank you so much for You're joining welcome. today. This was fun. This was great. It's so much. Fun Anytime. Fun. Yeah, and absolutely. And then I know um, Arizona Work does job virtual job fairs regularly, and they have them coming up on the 21st and 22nd. Will you yep. be in attendance at those? I am always at the one on uh, on the Wednesday, so I will be there on the 22nd for sure. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. 21st. 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 Okay, so for anyone who needs more information or has additional questions, you can tune in as well to the Arizona Work job fair on the 21st to get to see him again and get more information. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. I Bye. will. I'm going to enjoy my bag of chips. See ya. <laughs> Bye.